China is setting up overseas police service centers. They're supposedly to crack down on telecom fraud, but guess what? They have an ulterior motive. Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Do you ever get those annoying and also faintly menacing Chinese robocalls? My favorite is when they tell me there's a package for me at the Chinese consulate. Do they really think Amazon got my address that wrong? I'm not falling for that scam. I don't need strange packages since I can afford to buy whatever I want as soon as that Nigerian prince wires me the money he promised. But there are some people who have fallen for it. A 65-year-old Chinese woman complained to the NYPD that she had been scammed out of $1.3 million. Someone from the Chinese consulate called her and said she needs to call the Beijing Police Department because she's being investigated for financial crimes over in China. Now you might think she's just really gullible, but that could have actually been the Chinese consulate calling her. I'll explain why in a bit. These Chinese scammers likely operate outside the U.S. You'd know if they were in the U.S. if they said, we have news about your car's extended warranty at the Chinese consulate. As annoying as these robocalls are, they may have finally met their match. The biggest scammer of all is scamming them right back, the Chinese Communist Party. According to a report by the human rights NGO Safeguard Defenders, the party is targeting Chinese scammers living abroad. But how they're doing it is extremely questionable. You see, Chinese authorities have been cracking down hard on scammers inside China. So many have moved to other countries. But instead of working with local law enforcement to catch these scammers, Chinese officials are setting up their own law enforcement branches overseas. Besides being shady, that's also just rude. That'd be like someone coming to eat at your restaurant and they said, we brought our own chef. Not sure if I'd let them in the kitchen. Of course, China isn't calling them law enforcement branches. They're calling them overseas police service stations. Because when you add service in there, it just sounds like friendly Chinese cops there to help you renew your driver's license. What could be suspicious about that? Well, for one, these police stations are underground. And I'm not talking about the kind that are in the subway stations. They're underground because they're likely breaking international law. As far as we know, they're operating without the blessing or knowledge of local governments. When Safeguard Defenders tracked them down, they were all using addresses of completely unrelated businesses. Among the addresses, one in Dublin belongs to a Chinese supermarket, while a Glasgow address belongs to a Chinese restaurant. So they're basically just co-opting any business that's Chinese? Well, at least I know it's still safe to eat at Panda Express. That place is as authentically Chinese as I am authentically Martian. The sketchiest addresses were for Chinese hometown associations. These are community groups that cater to Chinese immigrants from a particular region of China. While often providing genuine services to the community, overseas hometown associations have by now become overwhelmingly co-opted by the CCP's United Front organizations, which seek to increasingly control the Chinese diaspora. And by control the diaspora, I don't mean little things like what karaoke songs people sing. Unless, of course, those songs have lyrics that harm national unity. Think of hometown associations as the eyes and ears of the Chinese Communist Party abroad. That is, if eyes and ears could also make threats. Much like these hometown associations, the overseas police service stations bill themselves as offering services to Chinese overseas. Hey, it's in the name. The so-called stations appear to be local phone numbers that overseas Chinese people can call to access services such as document renewal or to report cases such as fraud to police officers in China. It's all part of a program called 110 Overseas, which refers to the phone number you call in China when there's an emergency, like 911 when you're in America, 000 when you're in Australia, or 8675309 when you're in need of a good time. The idea is that if you're from China and you're scammed by another Chinese person abroad, you can report it to these Chinese authorities by calling their local number. But since the Chinese Communist Party is doing this, it won't surprise you to learn they also have an ulterior motive. I'll explain after the break. 
Welcome back. So China has set up a program called 110 Overseas, which on the surface is about helping Chinese living abroad. For example, if a Chinese person is scammed, they can call their local 110 Overseas office, and the Chinese police station there will just bring the scammer to justice. Maybe. At least it sounds like a pretty good mission, but the NGO Safeguard Defenders found that the crackdown on scammers is now itself becoming an endemic problem. Which is some surprise. Calling the Communist Party to help when you're being scammed is like getting bitten by a piranha and calling a shark for help. Last year, the party made a push to persuade scammers to return to China by a certain date or else face punishment. But instead of using evidence to charge and then convict them of a crime, they just targeted every Chinese person living in certain countries. China identified nine countries as being hotspots for Chinese scammers and made it illegal for Chinese to go there without a strict necessity or emergency reason, too. They also tried to persuade people living in those countries to return to China. Now, it could be true that there are a lot of Chinese scammers in these countries, but that doesn't mean all Chinese people in these countries are scammers. A Hunan police official told a Chinese news site that although not all Chinese citizens staying in northern Myanmar were engaged in criminal activities, they would still be regarded as targets for persuasion to return to China. He said some who were persuaded to return would only get fined for smuggling, because the police had no evidence they had actually committed a crime. So yeah, telecom fraud isn't great, but getting shaken down by your own government for crimes you didn't commit is even worse. This is like if you were out past your curfew watching a movie with your friends, and your parents called and said, if you come home now, we'll only ground you for smoking crack. Doesn't end there, though. According to Safeguard Defenders, Chinese authorities also went after family members of the alleged scammers. One woman living in Cambodia, who wasn't accused of any crime, was pressured by Chinese authorities to return to China because Cambodia is one of the nine countries with scammers. When she refused, authorities threatened to cut off power and water to her elderly mother's home in China. Later, her mother's house was spray-painted with the words, House of Telecom Fraud. Spray-painted? The CCP is about as mature as a 13-year-old boy whose parents just got divorced and is acting out and is failing all of his classes. And I'm totally not talking about myself here, I'm talking about Matt. Anyway, here's the craziest part. In Laiyang city of Shandong province, authorities threaten Chinese living in northern Myanmar to return or else the bank accounts of their immediate family members and friends who engaged in financial transactions with the suspects would be controlled, restricted, or even canceled. Freezing the bank accounts of friends and families? Justin Trudeau is like, that's too far even for me. There's another, even sadder layer to all this. Some scammers themselves have apparently been scammed into scamming. I know that sentence sounds like it was said by exhibit, but it's actually talking about human trafficking. Stories of often young people being lured to other countries only to be held hostage and forced to engage in online scams are not limited to Cambodia. One report identifies Myanmar as another hotspot for such actions, where people are often promised well-paid positions to lure them. Yes, if it's any comfort to those who have been scammed, it's possible your scammer was scammed, even worse. How's that for karma? Now, state-run media has said China is trying to rescue these people, or to persuade them to return to China. They're trying to rescue kidnapped people by persuading them to come home? Brilliant! Hey, Brittany Griner, have you ever thought about just leaving your Russian prison cell and going back to America? Now, rescuing and persuading are two really different things. And I'm guessing Chinese authorities are doing more of the persuading and less of the rescuing because, again, they haven't shown they're really interested in finding out who's actually guilty. One of the success cases the government has been touting is a man who was supposedly tricked into being part of an online gambling operation overseas. He managed to escape his captors and called Chinese authorities to ask if he could come back to China to surrender. He did, and according to state media, the public security organs are seriously dealing with his criminal acts in accordance with the law. So, sorry you were held hostage and forced to break the law. Enjoy your time in prison. China says its campaign to contain telecom fraud has been a success. 
even though it looks like as much of a success as when I build IKEA furniture. According to state media, in a little over a year, 230,000 people involved in telecom and online fraud were re-educated or persuaded to return from overseas. Wow. Does that mean I'm going to finally stop getting these Chinese robocalls? Hello? Hello. This is a notice from T-Mobile Chinese Voice Department. I guess not. So what role do these overseas Chinese police services stations play? I'll tell you right after the break. Welcome back. Unless YouTube demonetizes us again, in which case I hope you enjoyed the restful black screen. Thank you for supporting us on Patreon and Locals. So cities and provinces all around China have been threatening overseas Chinese to return to China or else. And if they don't, their family, friends, and property could all be in the crosshairs. And it's not like these are convicted criminals. They're also scooping up innocent people whose only crime seems to be living in a country that China deems too scammy while also being ethnically Chinese. I know, China persecuting people solely for their ethnicity? No way. Until recently, the Chinese Communist Party's ability to force citizens to go back to China was limited. They mostly did it via the phone or internet and putting pressure on their families back in China. But thanks to the 110 Overseas program, it seems they now have boots on the ground. If someone doesn't return to China, they might just get an invite to have tea with a local cop. One Chinese business owner in Mozambique contacted one of these overseas police offices. He said he had an employee who stole money from him and returned to China. The police arrested the man in China and then tracked down an alleged accomplice still in Mozambique. They reportedly got the accomplice to go back to China as well. This is just one example of how the overseas Chinese police stations are part of this extra legal pressure campaign to bring people back to China. And they're expanding around the world fast. Safeguard defenders counted 54 overseas Chinese police stations on five continents. Most of them are actually in Europe for some reason. And those are just the ones we know about. Those 54 all came from a pilot program run by two counties. Just imagine if there were even more counties involved. What's that, Shelley? Oh, there are more. A government announcement said the pilot program has now been spread to 10 provinces. So 54 overseas police stations is probably lowballing it by a lot. Now you may have heard of China's Operation Fox Hunt. Maybe you're wondering how this is any different. Well, in short, Fox Hunt goes after higher profile targets. Now China describes Fox Hunt as some kind of international anti-corruption campaign. It is not. Instead, Fox Hunt is a sweeping bid by General Secretary Xi to target Chinese nationals whom he sees as threats and who live outside of China, across the world. We're talking about political rivals, dissidents, and critics seeking to expose China's extensive human rights violations. Will the 110 Overseas and Fox Hunt programs work in tandem? Probably. Both target Chinese people living abroad. And they are both shady organizations that operate below the radar and above the law. But their targets are different. Speaking of being above the law, there's a reason the Chinese regime doesn't use legal channels to track down targets. They don't want the scrutiny that going through legal channels would bring. Also, by this point, I'm not sure the CCP even knows how to do things the right way. They're so corrupt, they probably found a way to jaywalk indoors. Even in countries China has extradition treaties with, these extradition treaties are rarely, or in some cases never, used, as authorities instead rely on the faster, smoother, and easier method of having people deported, thus depriving them of any chance of due process to fight accusations of criminal behavior. Now, it's not like the Chinese police haven't been legally allowed to operate in foreign countries. In fact, quite a few countries have welcomed Chinese police officers. Back in 2014, France signed an agreement to have Chinese police patrol tourist areas. Italy did the same thing a year later. Zambia signed an agreement in 2017, but it got quashed before it started because of public outcry. Yes, the Zambians protested while the French just surrendered. Hmm. So did Cambodia, which has worked with Chinese police in 2018. And Serbia signed a policing agreement with China in 2019. And the leader of the Solomon Islands, who signed a security deal with China earlier this year, hasn't ruled out using Chinese police. 
China is also a member of Interpol, the international law enforcement network that targets criminals who cross borders. But again, the reason China doesn't want to go through the legal system is that it's not really interested in justice. It's interested in making Chinese people think that no matter where they run, the Chinese Communist Party will hunt them down. If Chinese people believe that, you can bet they're going to think real hard before challenging the party, even overseas. Suddenly, robocalls don't sound so bad. Compared to the CCP's scam, I'd much rather talk about my car's extended warranty. And finally, this show would not be possible without support from viewers. Join my exclusive 50 cent army by contributing directly to the show on Patreon or Locals. And as a perk, I answer my supporters' questions at the end of some episodes. Today's question comes from Ian Pendleton on Patreon. Do you think there will ever be a point where the U.S. will drop out of the U.N. because of how much influence the CCP has amassed over the past few decades? Or would that somehow only feed into China's narrative about America being a disruptive influence and enable the CCP to amass even more power and influence in global affairs? Good question, Ian. Both the U.S. and China are among the five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. And while the U.S. is the largest funder of the U.N., China is the second. So the U.S. and China are essentially the two dominant countries, a sort of good cop, bad cop, buddy comedy, where the future of the entire world is hanging in the balance. If the U.S. drops out of the U.N., the People's Republic of China would certainly have a lot more influence there, at least at first. But it could also shift the balance of power so much that it might affect other countries. With China in the lead, some U.S. allies might see the U.N. as a joke, and they too might leave. And then the UN would just become another one of those weak international organizations that everyone's vaguely heard of, but no one is quite sure what they actually accomplish. So I don't think the US will drop out of the UN entirely. If they did, the UN would probably fall apart, and historically, it's not supposed to happen until World War III. Thanks for your question, Ian. And thank you to everyone else as well who supports us directly through Patreon or Locals. Patreon is a way for you to contribute a dollar or more per episode and interact with us. Locals is a social media platform that has a monthly subscription that also allows viewers to support us directly. The links are below. We really do rely mainly on viewer support for this show. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.